Hello and welcome. I'm Natalie Lawrence and today I'm going to show you two ways of saving your own table format styles in Microsoft Word. The first way I'll show you is how to save a table style that's already been formatted. If you've ever received a file with a formatted table in it and you wanted to reuse it later on, you can save that table within Word and quickly insert it into other documents without having to find the original file. The second way I'll show you is how to create and save a style with different colours, fonts and other formatting and apply it all in one go onto new and existing tables. This will really help if you need to apply brand colours and fonts to tables and make them look consistent. So if you're interested in formatting tables more quickly, keep watching and I'll show you how to do that. Let's start with the first method. This table on the left is the one I want to save within Microsoft Word. It's already been formatted and I'd like to reuse and edit it again in other documents. So to do this means using the quick parts and building blocks features in Microsoft Word, but they're really easy to use. To save the table, select it, go to the insert ribbon and click on the quick parts button. At the bottom of the menu, click on save selection to quick part gallery. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts Alt and F3 after selecting a table. A new dialog box appears called Create New Building Block and here is where you'll add in some details about the table. First, give it a name. Then choose the gallery for it. Choose what type of object you're saving from this list. You can see here there are lots of different types of objects you can save as a building block. As we're saving a table, choose Tables from the list. Next is the Category field. This helps to file the table within the building blocks organizer. You can choose built in or general, or you might want to create a new category if you want to save several objects under a company or department name, for example. Next, you can add in a description or you can leave it blank. Moving on to the save in field, this one's really important. This is where you'll choose whether the table is going to be available in all documents or just for documents based on a specific template. If you only want the table to be used within a particular template, that file needs to be open before you start saving the table. Only then will it appear in this list. Otherwise, choose a normal template if you want it to be available for documents based on that, or select building blocks to make it available for all documents. The last field called options determines how the table will go into the document. Choose insert content only so that it goes in wherever the cursor is on the page, or choose to either insert it on its own paragraph or page. Press OK and now your setup is done. Now when you want to reuse a table, you go to the Insert ribbon, click on the Table button, and then click on Quick Tables at the bottom. Here's the table. The Quick Tables are shown in alphabetical order, so you might want to bear that in mind when you're naming your table. Click on the table to insert it, and now it's ready for you to edit. Let's look at the second way of saving a custom table. In the design section of the Table Tools ribbon is this Table Styles pane. It has a number of styles already available to use and all you have to do is select your table, then click on one of the styles to apply it. To create your own style, click on the More button at the side of the Table Styles pane. You can start by either choosing New Table Style at the bottom of this menu or by right-clicking one of the table styles and choosing the same option from the shortcut menu. If there's a style that already exists that looks similar to what you want, you can click on it, go to the More button and choose Modify Table Style from the menu, or right-click the style and choose the same option from the shortcut menu. Here's a dialog box where you're going to add details of your new style. Give it a name. You can leave style type as table and for the style based on field, you can leave that as table normal or you can change it if you want to base it on another table style. Move on to the formatting section to get started on the look you want. To customise the whole table or different parts of it, go to the apply formatting to field and choose the area you want from the menu. You can customise areas like the header or total row, create banded rows or columns or work on other areas in this list. The next row of options helps you format the text. Here you can choose the font, font size, 
whether the text should be bold, italic or underlined, and you can choose a font colour. The next row of options formats the cells. Choose your border type, or you can switch off the border here. Then choose your border width, colour, the location of the border, the fill colour of the cell, and finally the text alignment within the cell. So I'm going to go ahead and create my new style. I will change the font size of the whole table, then make the header row look different. I'm going to change the fill colour of the cells here. I'll change the look of the font. I'll add some borders to the odd banded rows. And now to the even banded rows. Notice that once I've picked the location of the border, I need to click on that button again to apply the change. Finally, I'm going to add a double line border to the total row. There are two more sections to look at. With these options, you can choose to either make this table style available only in this document, or if you're working on a template file, you can make it available for all new documents based on it. Finally, there are some extra formatting features available from this format button. You can access several of them here, such as table properties and borders and shading. With fonts and paragraph, these bring up the normal dialog boxes that you see for these features. So you can go into fonts and change things like character spacing, or you can click on paragraph and change the before and after spacing figure. Choose text effects if you want to add things like shadow or glow to, to the text. Click OK to finish, and now you're done. So now all you have to do to apply your new style is to select the table and then click on style in the table styles pane. So I'm just going to quickly point out some key differences between the two methods. For quick tables, you can save tables with text in it. You can save complex looks. So my example had two header rows in it, what looked like two header rows. So you can't actually do that automatically in table styles. You'd have to create that look manually. The formatting is only available for that quick table. This means you can't copy and paste it onto another table. For any new rows or columns that you add, look carefully at the formatting. It might not be the same as the rest of the table. And finally, quick tables will not repeat formatting. So if you have a quick table with different colours for odd and even banded rows, for example, the new rows won't follow the pattern. They'll simply use one style from the previous row. Now for table styles, you can apply them to any table, new or existing, which makes them great for applying a consistent look to all tables, regardless of whether you've created them from scratch or copied them in from somewhere else. They only save formatting, so no text can be saved inside of them. You can only format different areas according to the apply formatting to list. For example, there isn't a, a subtotal row or a second header row. You're restricted to the areas available in that list. Finally, any new rows or columns added will follow the pattern set in the table style. So if, for example, you have odd and even rows formatted differently, a new odd row will look the same as the other odd rows and a new even row will look the same as the other even rows. All right, so I'm going to give you an extra tip now for formatting table styles. If you did this with me, uh, you may have experienced a problem with changing the fonts. And if you didn't, you might experience this in the future if you're working on other computers. I'll show you what happened to me before recording this video. I created a new table style and in the dialog box, I chose a header row to work on and changed the font to Franklin Gothic Demi. But as you can see here, nothing's changed in the preview area and usually all format changes show up there. Even when I click on the format button and choose fonts, it confirms my change, but this still isn't reflected in the preview area. So this means that any new table I apply it to won't have the font I want in the header row. So what's happening? 
Well, it turns out this is due to a clash between the fonts in the normal style and the fonts in the set default section in the manage styles dialog box. Now, if that didn't make any sense, please don't go. I will show you what this means and how to fix it quickly. Go to the home ribbon and in the styles pane, right click on the normal style. Choose modify and check what font is being used in that style and make a note of it. For me right now, it's Frank and Gothic book. Next, hit the keyboard shortcut Control, Alt, Shift and S to bring up the Styles pane at the side of the screen. On the bottom of the side pane, click on a third button called Manage Styles. Now we can solve the problem in two more steps. In this dialog box, go to the fourth tab called Set Defaults. And finally, go to the Font section. Here it says the font is plus body. Change it by choosing from the list the font you were using in the normal style that you noted earlier. So for me, mine was Franklin Gothic Book. So I choose that one here and click OK to finish. Now when I go back and create a new table style and change the header row font, you can see it's now showing the change to Franklin Gothic Demi in the preview area. So there you have it. You now have two ways of making formatting multiple tables the same way a lot quicker. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and subscribe. More videos are on the way. In the meantime, you can go to my website at www.natalielawrence.com to find out more about my work in designing Word and PowerPoint documents and my training service. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I hope to see you back here soon.